the Chinese Communist Party and its military have infiltrated the West. How did they do it? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect yourself whenever you go online. And boy, has a lot happened this week. As I've been saying on the show for years, the Chinese Communist Party has quietly been taking over the world, extending its tentacles everywhere, like a communist Cthulhu. I love that graphic. Now, how the Chinese Communist Party took over the West is a big topic. But so much news came out about that this week that I had to make an extra episode about it. So here's a rundown, and let me tell you, it's bad. Let's start with the fact that Canada had invited Chinese troops to participate in winter military training in Canada. At least it was going to until the U.S. found out about it and told old panda hugger to knock it off. These are documents from the Canadian government. They relay the U.S. concern about knowledge transfer from Chinese troops observing Canadian training exercises. This was back in 2018, but it's just coming out now. The documents were obtained by Rebel News under an Access to Information Act request. The beautiful thing is, the documents were supposed to be redacted. But instead of being blacked out, the words were merely grayed out and still legible. Not sure whether this was a human error or a government clerk quietly deciding that transparency is a good thing. But either way, Christmas came early. Canada has since tried to say they weren't going to train with the Chinese troops. They were just going to let Chinese officers watch their training. Totally different. Now you might be thinking, why would they even think that was a good idea? Well, because China let Canadian troops watch their training drills. Now you'd think that after the whole China kidnapping two Canadian citizens thing, the Canadian government would wise up. But no. You see, the Canadian military actually canceled the training after the U.S. expressed concern. But then, Canada's Foreign Affairs Department begged the military not to cancel the engagement with the People's Liberation Army. Because China will likely read this as a retaliatory move related to the Meng Wanzhou case. And Canada does not want to be the partner that is reducing normal bilateral interactions. Because China kidnapping Canadian citizens didn't reduce normal bilateral interactions? Besides just those exercises that were canceled, the released documents show a number of other planned engagements between Canada's military and the PLA. Included in the list are PLA members attending a security studies program in Canada, PLA members teaching peacekeeping courses in Canada, Canadian forces taking and instructing peacekeeping courses in China, and Canadian delegations attending fleet review and training centers in China, among other planned items. So hey, all of you watching, you should feel pretty good about yourselves, because you're smarter than the Canadian government. Canada's Liberal Party has been pushing for closer ties to China since they won control of Parliament in 2015. Some big brain ideas they had include trying to establish a free trade agreement with a communist party, and even a proposed extradition treaty with the Chinese regime. The Canadian Conservative Party has obviously been having a field day with the news. Conservative Party leader Aaron O'Toole said, to learn that the Trudeau cabinet is kowtowing to Beijing is frankly disturbing. This highlights the Liberals' approach and their dangerous approach to China. Fun fact though, this agreement that allowed this type of cooperation between the PLA and the Canadian military was actually implemented by the Conservative Party back in 2013. That was under Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who was also a panda. Well, you get the picture. It's always the pandas. But the point is, there's plenty of blame to go around. One member of the Conservative Party defended the party by claiming that the Chinese government back in 2013 was different from the Chinese government now. Nope, it's not different. It's been the Chinese Communist Party all along. 
But it's not just Canada. This is a report by Safeguard Defenders, an Asia-focused human rights NGO. Lies and spies, Switzerland's secret deal with Chinese police. Sounds juicy, doesn't it? It says Switzerland had agreed to allow agents from China's Ministry of Public Security to roam freely, unsupervised, inside the country in a secret agreement that came into effect on the 8th of December 2015. The deal was so secretive that it wasn't reported until late summer this year when the Swiss side was starting to seek its renewal, as the original agreement was about to expire. This is part of China's Operation Fox Hunt, an attempt by the Chinese regime to harass Chinese dissidents abroad until they agree to return to China to face so-called charges. Last week, I reported that the FBI had to warn U.S. local and state police not to work with Chinese agents. You see, the problem is, the Chinese Communist Party is a gangster regime, but other governments treat it like it's just a normal government. So they let Chinese agents arrest criminals inside their borders. Stupid. Speaking of stupid, let's take a look at what's happening in the U.S. right after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Let's take a look at how the Chinese Communist Cthulhu's tentacles have reached into the U.S., shall we? Again, this is just what's come out in the past week. According to an expose in the New York Times, Apple has a policy of not criticizing China. And that especially goes for programming on its new video streaming platform, Apple TV+. Eddie Q, Apple's senior vice president for internet software and services, who has been at the company since 1989, has told partners that the two things we will never do are hardcore nudity and China. Hardcore nudity and China. That's funny, because I feel like I've just been forget about it. But hey, we're just warming up. Facebook uses a variety of fact checkers. One is called Lead Stories. And guess who provides some of the funding for Lead Stories? ByteDance. Yes, ByteDance, a Chinese company that owes its allegiance to the Chinese Communist Party. ByteDance also owns TikTok, and TikTok hired Lead Stories to do some fact checking. So fact check this. Lead Stories is being paid by a Chinese Communist Party linked company. Boom! Who fact checks the fact checkers? The answer is the Pointer Institute. According to Facebook, Facebook's independent third party fact checkers are all certified by the International Fact Checking Network. The IFCN is a subsidiary of the journalism research organization Pointer Institute. Where does the Pointer Institute get its money from? In part by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Google, Facebook, and the Open Society Foundations. That's George Soros' foundation. The Pointer Institute also partially funds a fact checker called MediaWise that also works with TikTok. Now on to politics, right after the short break. Welcome back. Last week, I mentioned the revelation that a suspected Chinese spy targeted politicians in California and elsewhere in the U.S. The woman is a Chinese national named Fang Fang. Her English name is Christine Fang. According to Axios, through campaign fundraising, extensive networking, personal charisma, and romantic or sexual relationships with at least two Midwestern mayors, Fang was able to gain proximity to political power. Since that story broke, photos have surfaced of Fong with many U.S. politicians, especially from California. Here she is with Fremont, California Mayor Bill Harrison. This woman loves China more than anything you'll ever love. One of her most significant targets was Democratic California Representative Eric Swalwell. He sits on the House Intelligence Committee. Fong also knew Russell Lowe, the staffer for Dianne Feinstein, who was also accused of being a Chinese spy. And according to the Daily Caller, Fong organized an event where both Swalwell and Lowe spoke. Think this is a big story? Well, you wouldn't guess it by how the media has been covering it. Or not covering it. According to Fox News, this has been getting very little airtime by many major media. And fun fact, 
NBC and MSNBC are owned by Comcast. Top shareholders include Vanguard and BlackRock, both of which invest heavily in China. CBS is owned by National Amusements. That runs Paramount and MTV. And China is a major market for both. CBS itself also has business interests in China. Hey, remember when CBS censored their show, The Good Fight, for a musical short that made fun of Chinese censorship? But according to Representative Chris Stewart from Utah, the Chinese regime frequently targets members of Congress. We know that members of Congress, especially you those who that? serve in very sensitive you know positions, are targeted. I mean, that's just a matter of, of course that we know that from our from our experience and from briefings. And that shouldn't surprise anyone. We know that the Chinese Communist Party is targeting businesses, academics. They're targeting members of Congress, members of Senate, members of the administration. That shouldn't surprise anyone, I don't think. Just because it's not surprising doesn't mean it's not horrifying. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo spoke at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, where he said U.S. colleges are bought by Beijing. The Chinese Communist Party deploys dollars just as much as it does cloaks and daggers to get its hands on valuable knowledge. There are many American scholars, often doing research funded by American taxpayers, that have been lured into the Chinese Communist Party's talent recruitment programs. The CCP pays them what is for them a fortune to do research related to their current fields for or in China and then often uses the fruits of their brain power to build its military strength. The U.S. Department of Education over the last years has found that schools have taken an estimated $1.3 billion from China since 2013. That's just what we know about. Like so many, like Columbia, so many schools that have failed to report the true amounts. What more? What more bad decisions will schools make because they are hooked on Chinese Communist Party cash? What professors will they be able to co-opt or to silence? What theft and espionage will they simply overlook? What business deals will get done as a result of that? Wow, I wonder how the co-opted professors at Georgia Tech felt after that speech. And frankly, how government officials in Georgia felt. Because they have close ties with China too. And China has been the state's largest trading partner for at least five years. I guess the devil really did go down to Georgia. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, you need to be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect your identity. Everything you do online is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider. And in many cases, by the government. And if you're in an authoritarian country like China, this kind of tracking can put you at risk of surveillance and even arrest. Even in the state of Georgia, you might want to be careful since Chinese state-linked ZTE has been expanding there and selling telecom equipment to local internet service providers. Hmm. That's why I recommend that wherever you are in the world, you use Surfshark to protect yourself online. And when you use Surfshark's clean web mode, you'll be protected from trackers plus a lot of ads and malware. With one account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get our special deal that includes four extra months for free. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.